How's it going? I'm Anthony and these are stories of my life. For those of you just joining us for the first time, these videos are a cognitive therapy tool for me. I've taken some head injuries over the years, my memory's been failing me, and the doctors have suggested I make these videos to preserve the memories I still have, as well as inspire some of you all who were involved in these events to provide me with details I may have lost or otherwise remind me of events I've completely forgotten, in which case then I can either remake an old video with the new details or make a whole new video for you and go from there. So I'm sure you get the idea. At any rate, uh, building off of the last video, the events of this one do take place in the early part of 1993. And that would have been my second semester of my sophomore year at Riverside Polytechnic High School in Riverside, California. I would have been 15 years old, having turned 15 on January 3rd. And I would have been living with my father in a one bedroom apartment at Quail Creek Apartments off of Horace and Arlington Avenue. Now, if you haven't seen the last video, you might want to go check it out. It might make uh, some more sense as to how it segues into the, the events of this one. But um, if you don't have time for that, to make a long story short, I had essentially gotten into a couple of fights. And the person I had gotten into a fight with was embarrassed about the whole situation surrounding what had happened and then decided to respond irrationally, did something stupid. And for whatever reason, his, I guess it's a sister, half sister, stepsister, adopted sister, foster sister, some form of a sister to him, had gotten the notion that this whole thing was my fault and that I had caused him to do this. The problem was she was, if I remember right, a senior, was on the varsity cheerleading squad and I believe was even one of the captains. So she was very well connected with the football players, basketball players, and whatever athletes and people she knew around the campus. So she's a very, very popular girl, apparently. And um, so she was convinced that I was the cause of her brother Thomas doing something stupid and she wanted to get back at me she wanted to make my life miserable as a result and employed her network of friends and athletes and whatever else to uh, aid her in doing so and I don't know what was said to them or her or what but um, it's just that's what happened so for the next three or four days following the incident with Thomas, um, I just started taking a ration of hell at school. And I didn't understand why. I, I had no idea what was going on. All I know is that just out of nowhere, every athlete in the school hated me. I had people pushing me around, you know, taking my book bag and throwing it on the roof or in the trash cans or you name it. You know, they'd rip it apart, throw everything everywhere, just really aggressively trying to make me look bad. I can remember getting pushed down the stairs on several occasions at the 600 buildings. I remember hurting my shin one time, or I think it was my ankle. And um, I had no idea who did it. It's just a bunch of random ass people that I didn't know their faces, didn't know who they were, didn't know their names, that were just picking on me out of nowhere. And it was ridiculous. And they were doing everything they could to embarrass me, throw things at me. Uh, they'd have maybe drinks and they'd dump their drinks on me as they're walking by. And I mean, you name it. It, it was happening like crazy. I can remember getting jumped at school. If I walked somewhere where there wasn't a teacher or campus security, uh, whoever was there would take a good quick five or six seconds to get some hits in, kicks in, and then run off. And I didn't know who these people were. If I knew who they were, I probably would have retaliated in the way that I do and uh, try to put an end to it. But there were so many people doing this. And I had no idea who any of them were. And I didn't know why. I didn't understand it. I can even remember walking to Miss Soto's class after lunch. As I'm walking by the portable buildings, getting dragged behind the portable buildings 
and getting jumped by like four or five guys that I had no idea who they were, never seen them before. Big dudes. And yeah, that was the norm for like two, three, four days. Like it's just what was going on. And then one day, one morning, I just decided I was not going back to school because uh, of how bad it was. My dad, you know, woke me up and told me I got to go to school and I, I refused. I flat out refused. And uh, I tried to explain to him why, but he kind of had this mentality of, you know, I need to go there and own it and whatever else. But it just, it wasn't happening. I, I was done. I tried to own it for three, four days. And by this point I was, fuck it. No, done. And him and I ended up in this huge argument. And, um, him and I already had a tumultuous relationship as it was at the time. So this argument ended up becoming this knockdown, drag out fight that started in the kitchen. I think we even ended up picking up knives and it became this little short knife fight. But it, either way, I got past him back into the living room and him and I are still verbally arguing about it. And finally, I just said, you know what? I, I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I'm, I'm out. So I grabbed my school backpack and I just dump it out right there in the living room in front of them. And I uh, go into the bedroom and grab some jeans some shirts, socks, underwear. I go grab my toothbrush, deodorant, toothpaste, and whatever else I feel like I need. And I think I even grabbed $40 out of my dad's wallet. And uh, I took off. Well, and as I was on my way out, actually, I was on my way out, my dad says, if you go out that door, you don't come back. I said, okay, whatever. And I start to walk out the door. My dad says, no, 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 no. You're not understanding. If you leave, I'm going to pack up all of your shit, put it into trash bags and leave it out on the patio. Okay. I just figured he was bluffing. Uh, I ended up leaving. So I left there I ended up going over to uh, Target, I think, was walking around and whatever else. I don't know how I spent that day while everybody was at school, but uh, at some point, Jim and Gabe came home. I think I went over to Jim's first, hung out there for a bit, then went over to Gabe's, hung out with Gabe for a bit. I think we even ended up at the Canyon Crest Town Center. It might have been a Friday or something, and we ended up watching a movie up there, and then I came home after that. And I got back to my dad's apartment at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, maybe. And um, as I'm walking up to the front door, lo and behold, there's a whole bunch of black plastic trash bags sitting out on the front patio, filled with all of my shit. And uh, yeah, so I laugh about it. I'm like, okay, you know, you made your point, Dad. You know, I thought he was bluffing, but he wasn't. So I go to unlock the door, and my key doesn't work. Okay. All right. All right. Made your point. So I bang on the door. And after a while of banging on it, finally my dad comes to the door. He says, what? I said, open the door, let me in. He says, no. No, seriously, open the door, let me in. No. Come on, Dad. No, I'm not letting you in. I told you that if you leave, you're gone. That's it. Dad, I just went over to Jim and Gabe's. Like, that was it. I said, no, no, no. I told you if you leave, you're gone. That's it. And him and I had a little verbal argument through the door. He refused to even unlock it. I tried to hop over the back fence and get in through the slider, but he had... Uh, put a bar in there so I couldn't do that either and I had nothing I could do he wouldn't budge so I grabbed all of the trash bags that were out there with my stuff and I walked over to this fence that separated the apartment complex from the commercial buildings that were in between the apartments and Target 
and I throw them over the fence and I end up hopping the fence. But I ended up burying the bags, not burying them, but put them underneath the uh, ground cover. I think it was ice plant. And put them underneath the ground cover so that they weren't visible immediately to anybody that was looking in the area. So it didn't look like just trash sitting there, you know. And um, so I put it all there and thought, okay, well, you know, what do I do? And I went over to, I think it was uh, Yum Yum Donuts that was right there by Target. And they were open early because they were making donuts. And I sat in there and had some donuts. And just figured, okay, well, what, what am I, what are we going to do at this point? And then I think when it got a little later, I finally went over to Jim's house and told Jim what was going on. And we ended up over at Gabe's at some point and told him what was going on. But my dad never let me back in. Never let me back in. And, uh, I ended up being on the street. I was homeless. Now, I had been homeless before. When I was, uh, what, 7th to 8th grade, something like that. My parents got divorced. We ended up on the street. But it was a little bit different. Like, then I was living with my mom and my dad, and we were going from car to car and trying to figure it out that way. But now I'm on my own. I've got no vehicle. I've got nowhere to sleep. I couldn't spend the night at Jim's every night and Gabe's every night. You know, and... Uh, but I'd go there as much as I could. And I'd take showers there as I could and uh, whatever else. But at some point, Jim says to me that his mom asked him about why I was now taking showers at their house. And that told me that she's starting to get a clue about what's going on. So I had to stop. And I figured if that was happening at Jim's, the same thing had to be true over at Gabe's. And so I had to had to stop that as well. And I didn't want a lot of people to know what was happening. And so I didn't share it. But uh, once I got an idea that the parents were figuring it out, I kind of just had to, to go on my own. And I did. And I started living and sleeping on the street. And finding a place to sleep when you're on the street is not as easy as it sounds. If I was an adult, I, I suppose I probably could have just laid down anywhere and fell asleep. But I wasn't. I was a, I was a teenager. You know, I was only 15 years old. So if a cop found me, who knows? Who knows what the repercussions could have been? I could have ended up in juvenile hall. I could have, you know, been taken back to my dad. If not my dad, then my mom, and that was worse. And so I wasn't about to have that happen. So everything I did had to be had to be sneaky. So if there was a wide open field that I could sleep in, like a golf course, for example, um, can't tell you how many times I slept in a golf course. Wide open field. Uh, I've slept in trees. I've slept underneath uh, the balconies of apartment complexes during the day. Uh, that was also that was a big one during the day because. The sun beating down on you, so the balcony you know, shaded it. Um, I can remember sleeping on rooftops of commercial buildings, and some of them actually weren't bad because they they had warm spots. Like uh, the Pizza Hut that was at the Candy Crest Town Center had a warm spot on the roof, and you can get up there and, and warm up if it was cold. And when it would rain, I remember there were several nights where it rained, uh, a couple where it was pouring down rain. I would end up sleeping in the little laundry facilities that they have at some of the apartment complexes in the area. And that worked out well because if I had some spare quarters, which I was usually able to come up with some, I could throw my wet clothes in there, let them dry and warm up. And I could sit there and lean up against the dryer and, and get warm that way. Plus the uh, laundry room itself would start to warm up from the and uh, it was, you know, shade me from the 
the rain or the wind or the cold or whatever it might be. And so there, I, I would find ways to make it work. Sometimes it was hard because depending on what was going on, you just get cold, you get tired, you get so tired because you're not sleeping right. You, you're always sleeping with one eye open because you're worried about people stumbling on you, animals, maybe coyotes, whatever it might be. You're always worried about that. And uh, so it was rough. And then the other thing was like uh, bathing. Bathing was a pain in the ass. And for the most part, you could go into any bathroom and like rinse up with a wash rag or even a t-shirt and you know clean off the the major portions of water and soap you know the hand soap especially that they had but there was times when you were just so nasty because uh, and maybe you ended up in sleeping in mud because it rained or just you just get nasty and you need to literally shower well there, i didn't have a shower at the time and so I'd end up using uh, garden hoses. Well, the problem with a garden hose is most of the ones you find are going to be attached to a house. And if you you can't use it during the day because you got to strip down. So you got to do it at night. If you do it at night, the moment you turn it on, people are going to end up hearing that the water's running and they're going to come out and investigate. So you either had to be fast about it or you had to start learning people's uh, patterns and try to catch the garden hose when they're not at home. And that's what I tended to do. So if I needed a shower, I'd try to keep an eye on people when they're not home and then go use their garden hose and, and try to scrub up that way. The worst, the worst part I think about the whole ordeal was eating, was trying to find food. And um, I'll tell you what, if you've... If you think you know what hunger is, try going a couple of weeks without eating. And you'll you'll learn a whole new lesson about yourself and your behavior when it comes to that. And um, I wasn't one to beg. I was too, too prideful to ask people for money or ask for help or anything like that. I refuse to do it. I refuse to be the fucking panhandler on the side of the road with a sign. But I didn't have a problem with stealing food from a grocery store, like a corporate grocery store. And I and I would. I would steal food, uh, maybe deodorant, or I remember losing a toothbrush, stealing a toothbrush and toothpaste. And... A couple times I got spotted, and I, you know you had to run out. But uh, yeah, I mean I didn't know anything about homeless shelters or food banks or or any of that, so I just I had to I had to do it the way I knew and do it the hard way. And and it was rough. You know that was when I started learning about what cold is. I mean, there's cold, but then there's cold to where your body core temperature gets so low that you want to die because you just, you're that cold. And yeah, it just, it sucked. I was 15, you know, and that was, it was a hard one. And little did I know I would uh, I would end up spending the next five months like that. Yeah. Anyway, if you have any memories from that time frame of me, let me know. Thank you for watching.